Chef, how are you? Lovely to see you. So guys, how are you away from a revolution in the rake here? Here with uh, Chef Sebastian Lepinois, a gentleman that I think is an absolute genius. And I think he's a genius uh, because he is the master of innovation while also still being classic, right? And uh, here at, at Les Amis, I think this is a restaurant that really represents this. It is food that is pays enormous respect to the ingredients. It is a restaurant that plays enormous respect to heritage and tradition, but yet at the same time is incredibly creative and incredibly innovative. And today, I wanted to show him a really special watch. But first, I wanted to talk to him a little bit about uh, his philosophy related to food. So, Chef, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to, to have the interview with you today. I'm very, um, uh, very glad to, to, to be with you today because I, like you say, I represent the, the classic cuisine and uh, it's, is what, what I know, the classic cuisine, is what I like to do as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about that first, because I think what's really nice now is that we have returned to sort of a neoclassical period in food, and actually in a lot of different things. I would say sort of in clothing and in watches as well, right? So, for example, watches to me, the size of watches is getting actually smaller, or actually back to the classical proportions. And that's certainly the case in the watch we're going to show you later. But in terms of food also, you know, we went through a period where there was smoke, there was molecular cuisine, and I think it's really nice that we've come back to something that's really authentic. Why do you think is that the client today wants something that has that authenticity? Yes, absolutely agree with you. We are back actually with the classic cuisine. Uh, after, I will say, a decade of uh, a more innovative cuisine, we are back to the classic. The reason why, maybe because you know, it's like, it's like everything in the life, everything is like a cyclic and uh, there are some uh, moments where the people will come back to the classic cuisine and we are quite uh, very successful actually. The main thing is the quality of the ingredients, the quality, uh, the, the technique, the quality of the ingredients, it's all make the classic cuisine. Amazing. You know, the other thing for me also is that there's a, for me when I come to Les Amis, when I eat your food chef, there's a powerful emotional uh, experience that I have. And to me, there's um, a certain comfort that I feel, almost like I'm being embraced by a blanket, you know? And, and it makes me smile, it makes me, me happy. And I don't like food in the past that you know, was challenging me, that was trying to make an uh, intellectual challenge to me, trying to make me identify what the ingredients were because they were so manipulated and so changed. And what I love is the purity of the expression of the ingredients and the, the capacity to make me feel warm, happy, and comfortable. How do you inject this emotional experience into your food? Thank you for this kind of work first. Yeah. <laughs> yes, um, with a classic cuisine, we try to don't give any challenge to the guest. We go directly to the flavor. What is the more important for me is to create a dish simple to understand. I, I don't want a complication for the guest. In the kitchen, it's a very complicated because, you know, in the food, more is simple, more is complicated. But I guess for the watch, it's also the same. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's actually really pertinent to the watch we'll be showing you later, which uh, is apparently uh, very classic, but is also incredibly innovative. But first, let's talk about a couple of dishes that Chef has prepared to give an expression of exactly his philosophy in food. So Chef, can you tell us a little bit about the dishes that we're going to be seeing today? Uh, today, you will see uh, a sea bass. A sea bass who is one of the best French fish. Actually, the season of the sea bass, we will serve a sea bass with a mussel. The mussel with a very a common seafood, very, very common. But we try to cook in a certain way to make just perfectly cook, not overcook, not undercook. And the more important, we try to keep the water of the mussel to make the sauce. Alors, it's a, usually a summer dish. That's why the sauce will be a very light without cream without butter, just the pure flavor of the mussel. To open the mussel, we use a little bit white wine. Uh, the sauce is an essential element of the classic cuisine. One of the things why I find your food so comforting is the beautiful sauces, yes. right? You have the most you know, beautiful, pure, intense sauces that really bind the dish together. Yes, it's uh, something that I really take care and I have a saucier station in Les Amis since 2015. And now we have permanently, we have four persons inside the kitchen who do every day only the sauce. So you have four sauciers? Yes, I have four sauciers, four masters of the sauce. Like you can see also, it's all about the detail. In all of my fish, you can always see a veil. During the summer, it will be a veil of mushroom. 
to protect the skin of the fish with a very important, it's a very small technique that in the past, late 70, early 80, all the chefs always protect the fish when they cook the fish to don't give any aggressivity to the meat of the fish. That means when I cook, I didn't attack directly the meat. The meat is always protected by a veil of vegetables. It's a, usually a small detail that not all the guests will make attention of this, but on BI, like I said, the dish is so simple that it must be a perfect. We cannot have a fish a little bit dry. That's why we play with all the detail that sometimes people cannot see. And for the aesthetic, we just give a small and simple decoration with the herb to give some freshness. Alors it's a presentation very classic, like it used to be in every restaurant 30 years ago. Beautiful. Tell us about the second dish that you're preparing. I believe it's a potato salad. Yes, yeah, right? the, the potato salad is one of my signature dishes more than 10 years. It's also something very interesting because it looks very simple. You know, the potato is not a luxury ingredient, but the association between this potato and the caviar makes something very interesting. My first idea about this, uh, this place is to, to create a dish that, where I can serve the caviar. And the caviar, usually, by tradition, in a classic cuisine, you serve with the blinis. But I didn't want to serve with the blinis. That's why I have the idea to serve the potato, is like the stash, with a little bit, uh, a veil of cream on the top, like you serve usually a creme fraiche with the blinis. A little bit of aromat, as onions, capers, a little bit smoked salmon. It was like to serve the traditional caviar dish, it's interesting that there's just a small touch of salmon to it as well. In every blinis, usually, you use a smoked fish. Alors sometimes it can be some eel, smoked eel, right. some smoked salmon. It's a very important in the tradition, in the Russian ah. tradition, to serve with a smoked fish. The smoked salmon gives a very little bit touch, okay. a different touch, something who is going is a bit fishy yeah. and is matched very too. well with the egg. Very nice. And the more important is uh, even if you, you do a nice presentation or a nice decoration or the nice balance of the dish, the quality of the ingredient will be very important with the caviar. It's amazing. The caviar is something who always represents the luxury. That's why we have a, a very uh, special selection of caviar to just make for les amis. And uh, this caviar is really, really well selected. Now, usually we, we have an exact proportion who, who can do a, a good balance. We use 22 grams per dish. Wow. Because it's, a, it's a very important to have enough caviar in your mouth. The balance between the potato and the caviar is took a, many, many years for me to, to have the, the right balance. That's amazing, and I love the idea that that to me is a great example of innovation. You know, Chef was talking about how caviar is normally served with blinis, but he wanted to create something different. He wanted to create a potato salad with what he called a light veil of cream, and I've had that dish, and that light veil of cream with the caviar is transcendent. The thing I like so much about your food, and also which reminds me of Chopin watches, is you know one of my uh, favorite uh, books is by Marcel Proust, you know, and it's all about memory, you know, uh, the things of remembrance past. And when I eat your food, it's almost like I've tapped into the collective memory of food culture, you know. I feel as if that at some point someone's grandmother must have prepared a dish that's making me think about this, and yet it's executed in a way that's so refined and so elegant, you know. And I feel that that's the same thing about Chopin watches as well. When you look at them, and even though Chopin LUC is only 25 years old as of this year, you feel as if that brand has been around forever because such is the respect to the watchmaking traditions, yet it's executed in such an elegant and refined way. So Chef, I know you're also a Chopin ambassador. Tell me your thoughts about Chopin. You know, Chopin for me, it's a, a, a quite similar to my cuisine. It's a, a very classic. They have no, uh, they have no, I will say in French, no superflu. Yes, it just, superflu is just uh, detail. Something very elegant, right. very elegant, very classic. You, you make sure they have the quality in the ingredient. About the gold also, they use a certain gold who is a kind of sustainable. Yes, ethical, you know, yes. And ethical, yes. And um, it's a very matching my philosophy. Right. Really, really matching my philosophy.
So Chef, thank you so much for joining me now in the beautiful chef's table in Les Amis, which has got all of my favorite cheeses in the, in the back here. I see the Pont de Vec, I see Livarot. You know, when I'm near cheese, immediately I'm happy. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a watch that we have here today, which I think is also a wonderful representation of classicism, but also innovation, right? And that is um, a watch that has a flying tourbillon, it is an automatic watch with a micro rotor. It is cost certified and it is a Geneva seal watch, but it is also one of very few stop second tourbillons in the world. And it's one of only two automatic stop second tourbillons in the world as well. That watch is the Chopin LUC Flying T Special that was created for Revolution in the Rake. And today I have the pleasure of presenting to you. This is absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Absolutely beautiful. So the thing I love about this watch is it's the perfect representation of Chopin LUC, especially on the 25th anniversary of Chopin LUC, which is this year. And in many ways, it's an homage to the very original watch, the Chopin 1860, that was produced in 1997. And I happen to be wearing an example of that watch on my wrist today. What I think is remarkable about this watch is its elegance. Okay. So let's the talk. The size. Yes. Me, is, uh, what, what I see first is the size. It's yes. really uncommon size. Correct. The size is 36.5 mm in di diameter, but then if you turn it on the sides, it's only 8.2 mm in thickness as well. Mm. You know, and for a complication like this, it's by it's far the thinnest. You know, it, it's a remarkable watch. And you know what I love about it also is the subtlety and nuance and the detail. You know, so I was looking at your dish earlier. For example, your potato salad with the caviar, or your incredible sea bass with the mussels. Um, and you have that same nuance of this watch as well. So for example, the dial on this watch is solid gold. Or, mm. or massive. And the pattern that's applied to it is this beautiful guilloche en main, which means the guilloche is through a rose engine machine that's being traced and reducing a large pattern into a small, tiny pattern on the dial by a human being, which I love, right? And then on top of that, this watch is a flying tourbillon, which means there's no upper bridge to it. So you just see this beautiful tourbillon cage rotating mm. with the balance wheel pulsating at 3.5 hertz, which I think is just so cool. All right. But then I wanted to show you the stop second function as well. So the remarkable thing about this watch is when you pull the crown out, the cage immediately stops. And the cage is what, where the seconds hand is mounted, so you have effectively have stopped the seconds. And you'll see the balance wheel continue to pulsate, but because it's the cage that's geared to the gear train of the watch, immediately that stops the hands. And then when you press this button back, boom the balance wheel starts to oscillate again, and you immediately have the tourbillon starting to turn again. And what's really interesting here is that the rapidity with which the balance wheel comes back up to speed is purely dependent on the torque that's being applied through the gear train to the tourbillon cage. And this watch has two barrels, meaning it has optimal torque throughout its entire power reserve. Then, you know, you were talking about how each of your chefs is an artisan, you know, and mm -hmm. each of your chefs, when he's preparing, for example, the beautiful um, potato salad with the caviar, he's making sure that he's not leaving a single finger on the dish. And here you have also a wonderful example of finishing as well. You know, uh, the Côte de Genève, the Anglage, it's so refined. And as you can see also, the watch even has some internal angles as well, which mm -hmm. can only be achieved by hand, which I think it's is so beautiful. It's just very beautiful the way they I love that too. All the small details. Yes. Oh, I always am impressed with because, you know, for me, when I'm playing, for example, with my bicycle, I, I, it's impossible for me to take a screw and tighten it without making some mark on it, you know? So mm -hmm. how they're able to actually, like, for example, put the, the screws into the back case without leaving a single mark on that is <laughs> incredible. And I, I was very it's impressed with the steadiness of your hands, mm -hmm. you know? So you could probably uh, be a watchmaker, but not me. You know, it's, it's a kind of watch you, you really want to, to have. Yeah. Well, really take, I'll tell you what, take your watch off and why don't you try it on and tell me what your thoughts are. I'll take your beautiful Alpine Eagle and please put this one on. This is really perfect. Because you were mentioning that you have a little bit of a smaller wrist as yes. well, right? Yes, yes, and yes. you know, that's the thing that like today is, um, it's a little bit inconvenient that the majority of complicated watches are in very large dimensions, you know? Mm -hmm. So with this, I think it's remarkable is again, you have the best in terms of, um, of, of complication, flying tourbillon, automatic, cost certified in Geneva seal. It's, it's really awesome. beautiful. Yeah. It's very classy, but so, so modern in the other way. Exactly. It's exactly. classic, but so modern, so innovative in the other way. Absolutely. You know, and that's it. You know, like when you look at the watch because of the size, because of the thinness of the watch, it, you would think it's almost like a, a vintage watch perhaps, you know? Yes. And then you have this incredible innovation with this movement. And again, one of, I think it's only six stop second tourbillons in the world. Uh, I find that to be quite remarkable. Just beautiful. Just really beautiful. I'll show you this one as well because this was the re-edition re of the original Chopin 1860 from 1997. And, that, and this one is beautiful. 
Yes. And then what I always find is interesting when you put them next to each other, you realize actually, even though this yeah, is... That, is that some similarity, yeah. Right? yeah? And the size is actually, even in yes. terms of thickness, it's only one mm in terms of thickness mm. difference, you know? For the uh, guys like me who have a, a small WC, it's very, very nice this yes. kind of watch. Yes. It's really a kind of watch that you want to have. Yes. You want to have, you know? It's like the, the art in general, you know? I always say there are two kinds of art. You have the, the art for the painting, for the cuisine, for the watch. You have the wow factor. You, know, you have wow. But you have some other, some other art. You have maybe less this wow factor because it's maybe more classic. But it's something that you want to have at your home. It's something that you want to eat. It's not just an experience. Yes. It's something that you want to, to own. Yes. It kind of reminds me of wines that are extremely, you know, tannic. And then after that, they fade away. You know, whereas you know, sort of for me, the the best wines um, are super nuanced, and they continue to to sort of you know lengthen as you as you're drinking them. I think like the first and one of the only two times I've ever ever had a Domaine Romani Conti uh, was it was it's very subtle in the mouth, mm. but then it brings you on this transportive journey. It's yeah. just unending, you know. And I think that that's with watches like this, with cuisine like that, that's that's kind of the experience yes. as well. Yeah. It's something that you really want to have. Correct. Correct. Well, Chef, it was a pleasure spending the day with you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, this is beautiful. Great. Thank you so much, Chef.